In this lecture of Down to Earth, we would focus on numerous topics like wastewater treatment, cooling roofs, uh, fava beans, tribal rights, nuclear, uh, the nuclear fusion reaction and mercury pollution. To begin with the first topic which is wastewater treatment here, uh, let's understand that sanitations are well connected and they are connected usually to a septic tank. So if the septic tank is well uh, constructed, it would retain the sludge and discharge the liquid through the soap pit. Now the fecal sludge can be emptied into the treatment plant and the sludge that is emptied is rich in nutrients. Now when there is a global nitrogen cycle we understand that the nutrient rich excreta goes into the water body and this comes back to land as fertilizer. Now there can be various treatment procedures which can be done to use this waste water. Let's study about the case studies from Rome and Japan. So in Rome, the ancient city which was known as Roma, uh, there were huge aqueducts which were built and they used to run for tens of kilometers. Now Rome was built on the city of Tib uh, on the city with the river Tiber and this city did not need actually any aqueduct but uh, the wastewater that was coming from the Rome was discharged directly into the Tiber. This was polluting the river ex extensively and the water was not well uh, utilized or the wastewater was not properly done. We have another case study from Edo. Edo was the ancient city from which the present day Tokyo has grown and this traditional Japanese city discharge their waste into the rivers but it was never the case. It was never ever the case that the waste water from the nearby areas was discharged into the rivers as in the case of Rome. Though Rome was known for its huge aqueducts but still the discharge system was not that good. Here in uh, Edo or the present day Tokyo the waste was composted and this composted waste was ultimately used in the fields. Now some of the other important news for us, uh, the first one is the recent samples were studied for human blood and it was found that 80% of the human samples contained microplastics. Uh, for the first time we have seen in more than 40 years that Antarctica is under global uh, conservation. The reason is the ice shelf in the Conger region or the Conger ice shelf as it is called as has collapsed on the eastern part of Antarctica. Uh, the next is in child, uh, the new right has been passed and this is right to nature. It talks about protecting the animals, ecological preservation, promoting environmental democracy. Now child has been the second country after Ukidor to pass the right to nature as one of the bills in the constitution. The next is in Pluto, the planet Pluto, we have seen that the ocean beneath the surface of the Pluto has numerous peaks which have revealed that there were ice volcanoes that exist. Now there were domes which were on the surface of the Pluto that uh, emerged as the bumps of the large peaks which were underneath the surface and these were part of the, uh, the, uh, the water which was in the subsurface region and this were known as the ice volcanoes. The next is the Paharia tribe in Jharkhand is focusing on various native varieties uh, for getting independence in terms of seeds so that uh, seed banks can be created and community led seed banks have been uh, done. So. <clears throat> Cowpea, sorghum, finger millet, which are rare and vanishing species, their seeds are now preserved in these regions. A government recent policy is on draft motor vehicle rules and the idea is to simplify the process of vehicle scrapping, making it digital and making it much simpler. In the last few years, since 1901, uh, we have seen India witness the warmest March month this year where the temperature in the western and the central parts reached up to 40 degrees Celsius. The reason for this is persistent north-south low pressure which has prevailed during the winters when the La, La Nina phenomena occurred and the cooler phase of El Nino uh, might be one of the interacting reason, re, uh, reasons for the same. The next is the world is warming at a fast pace. The sixth assessment report by IPCC that is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says that the net anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions 
comes at 55 gigatons of carbon dioxide which is equivalent or uh, is nearly 54% higher than uh, the 1990 estimates that means we have significantly increased the amount of carbon dioxide emissions globally now if we focus on some of the statistics the least developed nations account for only 3.3 percent of these emissions 41 percent of the population live in the countries that emit less than three tons of carbon dioxide emission per capita uh, but Unfortunately, these are the nations which face the severest effect. For example, the SIDS, which are the small developing island nations. These are the nations that face the most worst consequence of climate change. Again, we have been working with numerous forms of energy that could be sustainable energy and uh, environmental energy. For example, uh, photovoltaic energy, wind energy. Uh, the cost of wind energy over the years has reduced by nearly 55%. As you can see this curve, there are two costs, the market cost and the adaptation, uh, adoption cost. So you can see the market cost for photovoltaic onshore, offshore winds, the solar power and battery packs all have decreased significantly and the adoption rate has increased again significantly. The adoption in uh, millions, as you can see, has increased significantly. So all these uh, alternate forms of energy have been definitely useful. The next is one important case study and that's the sandalwood and teak trees. Now Karnataka and Tamil Nadu has now allowed cultivation of private agricultural lands to grow sandalwood. A farmer who has a sandalwood plant, just one plant can earn up to rupees 1 lakh from a single tree in a period of 15 years. But Sandalwood, the bark is extremely useful. Now pruning is an activity where the bark which is dried is removed. This, this actually uh, protects the plant from uh, getting dried. The, uh, the activity protects it from sunlight, from diseases and it improves the height of the plant but limits the girth in which the plant can grow. So there are various trees that actually self prune. Ten, uh, sandalwood is not that tree which self prune itself. But uh, what has been done over the years is since sandalwood bark has been in demand, the farmers who are growing sandalwood have been pruning it indiscriminately. Now, if there is excessive pruning, what would happen? The bark would be wounded and uh, the cuts, the inner cuts would be exposed. As a result, the plant is more prone to diseases. There could be fungi, for example, Allophoma tropica, Gendorema uh, alpinatum and other fungi which would infect the plant. Wood borers would actually uh, move into the plant and all those would affect and infest the plant uh, tree, uh, the plant uh, stem itself. So it's very important that injudicious pruning is not done. Now pruning is definitely harmful. For example, in case of sandalwood, the weight reduces, the value of sandalwood in the market reduces. If the same is done for teak tree, the stem would get weak and teak is used for manufacturing of uh, uh, furniture. So what would happen? It would restrict the durability of the furniture. So all this actually affects. Now pruning is also harmful because if pruning uh, is done, excessive pruning is done, it would restrict the pollination, uh, the nesting resources of the birds would be affected and ultimately the ecology, the, the phenology would be affected in the region. With the rising winter, uh, with the rising summers, we have seen that it is the first March since 1901 where 40 degrees Celsius has been witnessed in the western and central parts of India. Now with this rising temperature, Cooling and alternatives to bring cooling becomes important. For example, Ahmedabad has made a landmark in the scene. Uh, roofs are now made up of recy recycled coconut husk and paper waste. And this makes the roof waterproof. Uh, also, the upgrade is easier as compared to the previous asbestos. And this keeps the inner temperature cooler by nearly 5 degrees Celsius. Similarly, there are various uh, uh, corrugated fiber sheets which are installed uh, on the asbestos or the tin sheet. There has been another method which is devised which is known as resin coated bamboo mats. Now these bamboo mats 
are put on the top of the uh, roof and they act as a medium to keep the temperature low within the building uh, in bhopal there has been another effort which is done where the roof is being potted with plants it is known as green roof so this green roofing strategy again uh, cuts down the heat by nearly 2.5 degrees celsius so these are some of the interesting ways through which cooling can be achieved the next is fava beans also known as fava beans or broad beans have been domesticated since long commonly seen in the mediterranean region in china india pakistan this crop has been commonly grown this bean has been serving as one of the wild varieties in israel since 14000 years ago and this is now largely used only for livestock or to prepare traditional dishes like falafel bisara or nabet soup however this bean is known as happy hormone happy hormone because it is a precursor to dopamine now dopamine has an important role in the ability of a person to think and to plan and therefore this fava beans is considered as a wonderful treatment for parkinson's disease also this is loaded with excessive protein 25 to 30% of the seed is protein but on the other hand it does has some drawbacks for example it has new huge amount of tannins which can lead to stomach irritation it also has phytates which can lead to liver damage similarly this bean also uh, contains two chemicals which are known as vicin and covicin these cause severe reaction and the reaction caused is known as favism now this fa favism which is caused by the fava beans is where there is deficiency in an enzyme glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase now this could be life threatening for small children it has an ability to destroy the rbc and the person shows uh, symptoms of, of jaundice or dark urine similarly there have been uh, researches which have been done in order to reduce the amount of tannins phytates and uh, the reactions caused by the enzyme from the fava beans so icar which is the indian council for agricultural research eastern complex in patna has discovered two varieties which is low with tannin and phytates one is known as swarn suraksha the other is known as swarn gaurav the swarn suraksha is suitable for an area which is not under uh, um which is in the rain fed areas or it is in the areas of low rainfall but has 40% high productivity on the other hand you have swarn gaurav which is in the region where assured irrigation is there and the productivity increases the next is the bharat net scheme by the government now the pandemic which happened uh, recently acted as a litmus test for the uh, problem policies of the government it was believed that through this bharat net the rural areas would be given internet now this policy was started uh, the initial deadline for completion of the project was 2013 however it was revised to 2015 till then only 1 lakh gram panchayats could be covered and then the deadline was revised five more times in 2019 20 21 22 and now has been extended up to 25 many of the states of northeast sikkim nagaland mizoram manipur arunachal have the lowest share of internet connectivity in uttar pradesh every 3 out of the 4 service ready gram panchayats do not have the active internet connection the lines are there but there is no active internet connection so this all proved during the uh, lockdown period during the period where pandemic affected the country and it was uh, the education which was hampered the economy of the region which was significantly affected the next is another interesting study which talks about wastewater surveillance now omicron variant which has been discovered has 32 mutations on spike protein a uh, us was among the first few countries to bring in complete ban when south africa detected the first case and a uh, us reported the first case on 1st december however a routine wastewater surveillance was conducted by united states center for disease control and prevention which is cdc and it was found that omicron variant was present in the regions of america much before december the surveillance shows the results from california new york colorado houston and uh, this method proved that 
the variant existed in the country much before it was actually diagnosed in the public. Similarly, this method, the wastewater surveillance method, is not a new method. It was used in 1990s to eradicate polio and uh, thereafter there were numerous studies which were done. In May 2020, uh, Netherlands conducted the first survey of wastewater to identify the presence of SARS-CoV-2 uh, samples in the sewage and this confirmed that RNA in the sewage was found but uh, that time the COVID prevalence was extremely low but still the samples were found in the sewage. Similarly, there was a, a model which has been developed by IIT Roorkee Department of Civil Engineering which says that surveillance of wastewater for early epidemic prediction can be proposed in a country like India and must be implemented in order to understand the details. The next is climate change and the impact. It has been witnessed that climate change has a huge impact with the economy. When the climate change affects the region, uh, let's say uh, it was during 1943 when the Bengal famine uh, was registered and Kolkata Sonagashi area was one of the areas which became the center for human trafficking. Now, historically it has been understood that whenever natural disaster hits a region or any calamity affects the region, the people first priority is to keep themselves physically safe. Now, in that scenario, human trafficking grows. But the incidences of human trafficking are not quoted. The Union Government's Climate Vulnerability Index 2019-2020 says that Maharashtra, which is on the least, uh, which is among the low scores on this index, still has a high risk. Now, with climate change, we have associated risk. For example, the risk of displacement, the risk of migration, food insecurity, job insecurity, and so the main population moves to other areas in order to get a livelihood, children and female being left behind which become vulnerable to all sorts of trafficking activities. So there have been various displacements which have been registered. Um, most of the displacements have been registered which are related to floods. However, the areas which are in the dry segments have registered displacements due to droughts. All of these show that India reported nearly 4 million new displacements which were due to climate induced disasters just in the year 2020 itself. And um, human trafficking is one of the third largest criminal enterprise in the world after drug trafficking and counterfeiting. So those were some of the major disasters which have been affected and this is also called as a modern day slavery because it leads to debt bondage. The person gets into debt, takes money from someone, gets into debt and keeps on working for that person because is unable to repay the debt. Similarly, early marriage, forced marriage, human trafficking or all related activities. The next is China's medicine system. Uh, now, Chinese government under Mao Zedong in 1949 uh, they started economic re uh, reforms and it was under the Deng Xiaoping's 1989 reforms that Chinese medicines were pharmaceuticalized means pharmaceutically these were approved and this was called as a period of great leap forward where from 1958 to 62 the industrialization of medicines animal based medicines started and this became a new way of industrialization in china so uh, parts from shark for shark oil musk deer seahorse ground beetles scorpions snakes all were used. People started injecting themselves with chicken blood, wrapping their wounds with toad heads, drinking raw blood of geese and duck. Similarly, there were alternative medicines that were discovered. For example, Beer's ga gallbladder was one of the medicines which was recorded during the Tang period and it was used to cure handful of diseases but 40 years down the reforms under the Dia uh, Deng's reform, it was believed that it is a go-to medicine for any ailment that can be seen. 
the next is tribal rights issue now tribal rights issue has been another important uh, study and under the forest right acts the schedule tribes and schedule uh, the other traditional forest dwellers act 2006 right to in situ rehabilitation including alternative lands where schedule tribes or other traditional dwellers have been illegally evicted uh, from the forest land without receiving a legal entitlement to rehabilitate Uh, were eligible but that was prior to 13th of december 2005 so what about those who have been displaced before that or after that so there was a big question and a loophole in the policy itself so what about the people who are uh, out of that range so it was made eligible only for certain segment of population the next is the ip rights or the intellectual property rights now in russia if anyone is using pirated software the consequences are dire the violation of the copyright and related rights is punishable with 6 years of imprisonment and a cost of nearly 6000 dollars so ip protection in public interest is important so moscow now passes a law which allows free use of patents which can be owned by the unfriendly countries and there have been uh, the software licensing mechanism to renew the expired license without the consent of the copyright owners the next is mercury pollution now mercury pollution is mainly seen in artisanal gold miners who are actually mining the gold but in the process of mining and uh, burning to extract the pure gold there is lots and lots of emissions of mercury and leading to mercury pollution so 38% of the global emissions of mercury comes from this and the minamata convention uh, the fourth conference on minamata convention in bali indonesia agreed by 137 nations said that we would stop the illegal use of mercury and the countries pledged for the first time to reduce the use of mercury in artisanal and small scale gold mining so as you can see in the map here are some of the areas where mercury used in artisanal and small scale gold mining is extensively high so in indonesia definitely in the regions of colombia bolivia peru are some of the significant areas where this is done on a huge scale now China, India, United Arab Emirates and other countries have become main source of mercury for sub-Saharan African nations after the hot spots like Mexico and Indonesia have uh, released their reports on the illegal trade of chemicals. The next is the most important and the most interesting thing of the class today and that's about the nuclear fusion fusion reaction. So far we have been talking about nuclear fusion reaction where uh, there is breaking of the uh, uh, the atoms but here we are talking about fusion that is joining the elements so hydrogen being joined to form helium and in that process whatever energy is released can be utilized. So a laboratory in United Kingdom generated 12 megawatt of energy for just in 5 seconds through the fusion reaction and that was more than doubling its own record that happened in 1997 but this energy was enough to power 35 houses for 5 seconds now understand what are the limitations nuclear fusion fusion reaction occurs at extremely high temperature so huge amount of energy is released in that process and that process is practically possible in a place like sun where uh, the fusion reaction can go up to 10 million degrees celsius however bringing the temperature to this uh, level is extremely uh, difficult on earth so on earth where the temperature is lower actually we require even further higher temperature to have this reaction and that is about 100 million degrees celsius so scientists at oxfordshire heated nearly 0.17 mg of mixtures of deuterium and tritium which are the two variants of hydrogen at a temperature 10 times which was hotter than sun and converted into uh, converted this into plasma the fourth state of matter then they uh, actually placed it in the superconductors Uh, the superconductor electromagnet as it is spun around in the donut shape it was called as jet uh, which is the joint european torus reactor and huge amount of energy was generated if this reaction continued for more than 5 seconds the copper wire electromagnets would get overheated and the reaction would collapse there itself another major problem with this reaction was that it 
took an input of 36 megawatts of energy however the output generated was only 12 megawatts so this was not as uh, not a sustainable option similar researches have been done by ITER which is international thermonuclear experimental reactor and there it was run for nearly 300 seconds it produced 500 megawatts of energy by heating it at 50 megawatts now this was a uh, actually beneficial reaction because less heat was consumed and more heat was given as an output but this target has been done for 2035 now this is a very big project which has a participation of 35 nations india is one of the nations which has been participating in it and india contributes to nine percent of the cost responsible for cryosat uh, a instrument which is designed to cool the reactor and the host of other components the cost for that India would be bearing now uh, this process is called as tokamak tokamak is nothing but the magnetic field coils which confine the plasma particles uh, to allow the plasma achieve the conditions which are required for the fusion reaction but the fusion is actually a reaction which generates endless energy uh, however it is a green source of energy because uh, deuterium is available freely in seawater and tritarium is a byproduct of any nuclear fission reaction so already we have deuterium and tritarium which are part of the uh, system and this can be utilized also the waste product which is generated is helium which is neither a global warming uh, gas and it's actually an inert gas so it does not harm the atmosphere similar studies have been conducted in different parts of the world for example china is conducting its own study where plasma temperature at 120 million degrees celsius for 101 seconds and 160 million degrees celsius for 20 seconds have been achieved similarly east which is experimental advanced supercomputing to Tokamak has been located at the Hefei Institute of Chinese Academy. South Korea is also reaching uh, similar targets. Now, understand it's not just the fusion reaction. Even during the fission reaction, uh, what is the difference? So, fission and fusion are different reactions in terms that fission is an uncontrollable reaction and it could lead to disaster if not controlled. We have also already seen natural disasters as it happened in the Japan's Fukushima region due to the tsunami. Uh, we have also talked about the fission uh, reaction can grow, grow uncontrollable as has happened at the uh, Zaporizhia plant uh, during the Russian invasion in Ukraine. These fission reactors can actually uh, be it natural or be it human induced can lead to accidents however no, none of such phenomena hold true for a fusion reaction so therefore we can say fusion reaction has its own advantage and if fusion reaction is successfully done it could create a game changing scenario for new sources of energy to be generated so those were some of the key topics that we have discussed definitely out of these fava beans cooling roofs nuclear fission and mercury pollution are some of the most important ones for your upcoming examination the handouts for the same would be available at exam race current affairs feel free to post any doubts and questions in the comment section below have a wonderful day ahead